on behalf of Gilbert Presbyterian Church, I welcome you to this special service of affirmation of Jay Nunley. We're so glad to have you folks from Jay's congregation, the First Presbyterian Church of Logan, and your minister, Reverend Kevin Gurink. Thank you for sharing Jay with us and supporting us in this covenant relationship. We also welcome the folks from the, from the First Presbyterian Church of Williamson and from the Presbyterian Church from Canada, Kentucky, uh, and your minister, Reverend Bill Hudson. Welcome. And to all our other guests who are attending for one reason or another, we're so glad you're here. A special thanks to Reverend um, Hudson and Reverend Gurink and Jim Musgrave, um, who put this service together, and to the Williamson Choir for sharing their voices with us today. We'd also like to thank the Margaret Peak Memorial Handbell Choir, who just performed, and to our two guest ringers, Susan Perry and Sharon McLemore. Thank you. Thank you to all who prepared food today, especially the desserts. They are overflowing and they were all delicious. Thank you so much. And a special thanks to anyone who helped in any way today to make this day happen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. If you're able, please stand. And join me in the apostolic greeting found printed in your bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Join us now as we sing our first hymn of praise, Blessed Assurance, page 341.
please join me in the opening prayer. Let us pray. Pray for your blessing on the church in this place. Here may the faithful find salvation and the careless be awakened. Here may the doubting find faith and the anxious be encouraged. Here may the tempted find help and the sorrowful find comfort. Here may the weary find rest and the strong be renewed. Here may the aged find consolation and the young be inspired. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. They push back from the table to listen to his word. It was his secret plans before he had to go. It's not complicated. Don't need a lot of rules. This is all you need to know.
We tend to make it harder. We build steeples out of stone. Fill books with explanations of the way. But if we stop and listen and break a little bread, we will hear the Master say,
you join with me in the prayer of illumination? Lord God, may your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Listen for the word of God found in the sixth chapter of the book, uh, of the scroll of the Judges. The Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them to, into the hand of the Midian seven years. The hand of the Midian prevailed over Israel, and became, and because of the Midian, the Israelites provided for themselves hiding places in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. For whenever the Israelites put in seed, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. They would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the land as far as the neighborhood of Gaza and leave no substance in Israel, no sheep or ox or donkey. For they and their livestock would come up and they would even bring their tents as thick as locusts. Neither they nor their camels could be counted. So they wasted the land as they came in. Thus Israelite was, Israel was greatly impoverished because of Midian. And the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried to the Lord on account of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites, and he said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I led you out up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of slavery, and I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all who oppressed you, and drove them out before you, and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not pay reverence to the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you live. But you had not given heed to my voice. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak of Orpha, which belonged to Joash, the Abazite, as his son Gideon was beating out wheat in, a, in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. The angel Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. And Gideon answered, But sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our ancestors recount to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has cast us off and given us into the hands of the Midian. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and deliver Israel from the hands of the Midian. I hereby commission you. And he responded, But sir, how can I deliver Israel? My clan is the weakest of Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord said to him, but I will be with you, and you will strike down the Midianites, every one of them. Then he said, If now I have found favor with you, then show me a sign that it, that it, it is you who speak with me. Do not depart until I come to you and bring you out my present and set it before you. And he said, I will stay until your return. So Gideon went into his house and prepared a kid and unleavened cakes from the ephah of flour, and meat he put in a, up in a basket, and broth he put in a pot, and he brought them to him under the oak and presented them. And the angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened cake, 
and put them on the rock and pour out the broth. So Gideon did this. Then the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of his staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened cakes and fire sprang up from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes and the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. Then Gideon perceived it was the angel of the Lord and Gideon said, Help me, Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Shalom, peace, do not fear, you will not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Shalom. To this day, it, will st it still stands in Orpha, which belongs to the Abazites. The word of the Lord. Let us pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. You may not know this, but the three of us meet every Tuesday to study scripture together so we can figure out what these words mean. And I have to tell you, I feel like a very old man <laughs> next to these two young bucks. And I'm kind of crusty in ministry. So are you. Uh, kind of crusty in ministry. And they are just so excited to be able to preach God's word and to minister in his name. And they are, you know, Guess what? You don't even have to pay them to do it. <laughs> now, me, on the other hand, that's a whole different issue. But this is an amazing thing. Thirty-five years ago, the whole church decided that it would let elders, under the uh, guidance of the Committee on Ministry, serve communion to congregations because 35 years ago they knew that they were having congregations that could not get a full-time pastor or a minister to come and serve them communion. The first time it came up for a vote, I voted against it <laughs> because it blurs the lines. Well, guess what? Ever since that moment, the lines continue to get blurred. So then we formed commission lay commissioned elders to preach, and we did a whole bunch of training for that. And you know, elders say the same ordination vows as ministers. That made some sense, but this doesn't. We're breaking all the rules for Jay. All of them. Every one of them. And quite frankly, the time I've been in ministry has been a time of great decline in the church. Half the churches in our presbytery, have 24, the, me, the medium size is 24 members. That's not 24 attending church. That's 24 people they have on the rolls. Now, if you don't know this, never trust the congregation's number on the rolls because they all lie. <laughs> Every one of them. But, but anyway, that means that we are larger, each con congregation here is larger than the medium-sized congregation in our presbytery. Think about that for a minute. And so, this may be 
the last time Logan will have a full-time pastor. It may be the last time me, it might be the last time Williamson has a full-time pastor. And we're going to have to depend on the likes of Jay <laughs> to do ministry. <laughs> Amen to that. Amen to that. The church has had to continue to change and adapt as it faces its new future. And, like the story in Gideon, we can always think back at those good old times when the Lord did some really powerful things in our midst. And this is a great story. The Midianites are basically uh, marauders that come out of the desert. And they, let me back up. They wiped out the Philistines. So there's a power vacuum. And you wouldn't think the Philistines were a great idea to keep around. But they kept the Midianites away. They wiped out the, Midi the Philistines, they defeated the Philistines. So the Midianites take over. And they thought the Philistines were bad. The Midianites took everything. They no longer can live in their houses. They've taken all the cattle off the land. And they destroy all the crops. Genocide. And it's so bad that Gideon is in a wine press, because that's lowered into the ground, trying to thrash wheat, probably to get some food to eat. And probably it's at night, so he won't be seen by the Mennonites. But if you don't know about this, you need lots of space to do this really well, and you don't do it well in a wine press. A wine press is no bigger than this. And as he's trying to get the grain, the angel Lord comes and looks down and says, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. He goes, There's nothing mighty about me, and if the Lord was with me, I wouldn't be in this wine press. You may say, if the Lord is with us, you wouldn't have Jay. Now, I need to talk to Jay for a minute. It's too late now. <laughs> In the Bible, the most normal response to the call of God is you're out of your picking mind. I'll give you an example. That's, here's Gideon. Yeah, right. Isaiah says, Woe is me, for I am undone, a man of unclean lips, and I live in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Do you work for radio? <laughs> Jeremiah says, I'm too young to do this. Moses says, I study. Talk to my brother. Every one of them says, you got the wrong man. You got the wrong person for the job. I love Jonah's response. I want you to go to Nineveh. And he goes the opposite direction as far as he can go. Jonah has to be swallowed by a whale and it spits him up out and throws him up on the shore and he's at Nineveh. The whole story of God calling and moving and bringing us leaders 
is one of, God, you must be out of your mind. I am delighted you have decided to respond to the call and suffer with the scripture for the rest of your life. I am delighted that you are going to do that and do it to this people. You know, we as Presbyterians talk about three points of call. And when we ordain our elders and deacons and ordain ministers, we're not doing that at the moment, by the way. When we do that, we say, God has called you to the voice of this congregation. Really? Think how bizarre that is. And that you say, I am called. Think how bizarre that is. And then you get a whole bunch of people somewhere that gather together and say, yep, he's called or she's called. Amazing. Amazing. And, you, and, and Jay, I'm sure you've run into a few friends and gone, what? Really? You? Now, the other thing that I want to say about Jay that was really bizarre about this, it's one thing for me to preach to people that never knew me when I was growing up. <laughs> now, I live, I preach a thousand miles away from my home. There's a reason for it. <laughs> but get your own people to say, we hear the call of God. After knowing you all these years. <laughs> you see, my family knows that I drink too much, I talk too loud, can't make it any northern town. My family knows that. I think your family does too. <laughs> the other thing is, your home congregation's just down the road. They remember you when you were knee-high to a grasshopper. And they're going to say, God called you? We're here to affirm that this grand experiment, because that's what it is, is blessed by God and wherever ministry takes you, whether you just stay an ordinary church person or get ordained as an elder or a deacon or even go on to seminary and be a, become a real minister, <laughs> whatever that takes you, we want to say at this moment in time, we hear God's call. Really? <laughs> the, um, your resistance to the call and the nagging of that call speaks to the story of Scripture, whether we're talking about Gideon, whether we're talking about Moses. It is always, huh? Really? Could this be true? And you know, the only way you know it's true is by living as a servant of the Word. I am delighted that you have decided to be a part of the larger ministry of Jesus Christ and confirm your vows at baptism by being a servant of the word. Um, this is really unique. This is really different. And this is our future. Calling people among us to be the servant of the word in our midst. That's pretty neat. And uh, my... Uh,
challenge to the congregation is Jay needs all the help he can get. Your job is to help him be the best preacher he possibly can be. Now, we will sit him down every Tuesday and try to get him on the right track. But I'm not making any promises. <laughs> Let us pray. God of grace, be with Jay. Be with every one of your servants who takes up the word and proclaims it to others. Help your church continue to grow in a very hostile world. And may we serve you with joy and delight and know that you are in our midst. Amen. Amen. Normally in a church service, when we are presented the word, we respond to that word. And so I'm going to ask you to please rise as we give together what it is that we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. In the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Amen. You may be seated. Beloved in the Lord, we have come to affirm James J. Nunley into a specific form of service within Christ's holy church as a lay preacher. Christ alone is the source of all Christian ministry through the ages of calling men and women to serve. By the Holy Spirit, all who believe and are baptized receive a ministry to witness to Jesus as Savior and Lord and to love and serve those whom they, with whom they live and work. We are all ambassadors for Christ, who reconciles and makes us whole. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. Following his resurrection and ascension, Christ gave gifts to the church. These gifts that were, some should be apostles, and that some should be prophets. Some should be evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. They are to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ. We stand within a tradition responding to the call of God to serve in Christ's church. The Ministry Committee of the Presbytery of West Virginia has approved Jay Nunley to serve as lay preacher for the Gilbert Presbyterian Church. They also elected or approved me to serve as a preacher occasionally, but to moderate their session and to provide sacraments when needed. I'm considered 
a commissioned ruling elder. And, believe it or not, I, they probably didn't meet him. They approved Bill Hudson. <laughs> did I hear did I hear anything? To be Jay's mentor. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind. What? Was that Sam? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Jay, we invite you to come forward as you accept this ministry. Come up here and stand. I'm going to... We invite you to come forward as you accept this ministry. You have been called to build up Christ's church. You have been called to proclaim God's word. To declare forgiveness through Jesus Christ to build up and equip those with whom they work, to show the gospel of God's grace in word and in deed. You are to share people's joys and sorrows. You are to encourage the faithful. You are to recall those who have fallen away. And you are to serve with the whole church in its ministry to the world. Well, I now turn to your, your, uh, what are you, your, your vows that you are going to take. <laughs> Welcome again to everyone. I'm Susan Perry and I'm the moderator of the Presbytery of West Virginia. And it is my privilege to ask Jay some questions uh, because he is making a covenant with God today. Not only a covenant with the Gilbert Presbyterian Church, but a covenant with God. And so it's my honor to ask him those questions. But before I do that, I want to mention something. In case you haven't noticed, I have this really neat stall on today. This is new. This is the first time that a moderator of the Presbytery has worn this because it was just created. On the back, there is a place where each moderator will sign when they conclude their service as moderator. And so I will be the first person that signs this, and all the other moderators who come after me will sign this as they conclude their year of service to the Presbytery. Now, you may wonder why I'm telling you that right now, except to say to Jay, you're not the first person that stood in this pulpit, and you're not going to be the last person to stand in this pulpit. God help us. <laughs> it is a long line, a distinguished line of people who have served God here in Gilbert. So make those people proud. They are looking on right now with joy, with anticipation, and I guarantee you there's not one of them up there that's saying, does he have a degree? <laughs> now, there are some people who have walked with you. I believe you have a mother and a niece out there. Would you like to come up and stand with Jay as he takes his vow? No one gets to this spot alone. It takes a family. It takes a village. It takes a home church. It takes a neighbor church. And another neighbor church. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Hemley, do you believe in your heart that you are called by God to minister here in Gilbert, West Virginia? Do you? Yes, truly, with all my heart. Do you believe the books of the Old and New Testament to be the Word of God? Yes, truly, with all my heart. Will you proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, upholding the witness of Holy Scripture? Will you? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of Holy Scripture and in your use 
of the means of grace. Will you pray for God's people and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living? Will you? I will, and I ask God to help me. Jay, will you accept the church's order and policy? Will you? I will, and I ask God to help me. And will you be loyal to the witness and work of the Presbyterian Church USA? I will, and I ask God to help me. All right. And who is asking the questions of the congregation? All right. Now I'd like to invite any uh, members of the Gilbert Church that are able to come stand here in front as we uh, ask you guys some questions. There's only one step in forward. There's only one step. I hope there's some more. Yes. Do you all, the members of the Gilbert Presbyterian Church of West Virginia, Confirm and receive, in the name of the Lord, the call of God to our brother Jay as your lay preacher. We do. Do you promise to honor his authority and welcome his service as a representative of Jesus Christ? We do. Do you promise to encourage and pray for him as you labor together for the welfare of the world? We do. Do you promise him such financial and personal support that he may serve among us with joy and not grief? We do. Sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and called in the service of God and marked as Christ's own forever. Now, if the members of Gilbert would please join me in laying a hand on Jay as we pray for Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this call that you have put on Jay for chasing him and chasing him when he wanted to run far, far away. And we just ask that you continue to be with him as he develops as a person, as a minister, here in Gilbert, throughout the Presbytery, and throughout the world. We just ask that you continue to make him a better person, a better preacher, a better pastor, and a better friend. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. The peace of Christ be with you. Go ahead and embrace your folks here and go. <laughs> We've got this from here. <laughs> yeah. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, you taught us to pray for ourselves and for others and to give thanks for all of life. May every grace of ministry rest on Jay Nunley. Keep him strong and faithful. May he herald the joy of your kingdom, serving rather than being served. Give your grace to this congregation. Strengthen it in service. Preserve it in harmony. Use it to extend your reign of justice and peace. Inspire your whole church with your spirit of power, unity, and peace. Grant that all who trust you may live together in love. Lead all nations in the way of justice. 
Direct those who govern that they be fair, maintain order. Support those in need and defend the oppressed that the world may know true peace. Comfort and deliver, O Lord, all those who are in trouble, sorrow, poverty, sickness, and grief. Heal them in body, mind, spirit, or circumstance, working in them by your grace, wonders beyond their dreams and hopes. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for all. Amen. Let us stand and sing in Christ alone, which is the insert of your bulletin. This hymn may not be familiar to all of you. Jessica and I are going to play it through all the way one time and then ask you to join us.
of this going back many years and many weeks. So I'll say thank you to all of you for being here, and above all, thanks be to God. And uh, many of you have heard me say this, and you're going to hear me say it many more times. Some of you may never have heard me say this, but I'll give it to you one more time today. I love you all, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Go out into the world in peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and belief, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen.